As long as we're finishing up on this symbol, okay, I said I'd go to vortex motion. I, I missed something, so let me, let me just um, ask you one more time, um, even though you mentioned it. One, four, and seven are always positive? No. There's there's a, one, four, sevens are always positive. They flip, they reverse the polarity. Or, or one, four, sevens are always negative. Right, I got you, I got you. Okay. So, but they, as soon as it creates a circuit, it's a good question. It goes to its opposite. Then. This coil here, the, the negative one four sevens are all on the wire that the positive eight two fives are on. You don't have, and the positive eight two fives and the positive one four sevens all have the negative eight two fives. They're so separated from one another that that's why only one wire is on at the other time. Because if both wires had the set, set, same family number groups on at the same time then this coil wouldn't work. It'd have resistance. Okay? So thus, when the first wire's on, it's all just positive 147s. And on that wire, there's only negative 825s. When the second wire's on, it's just all positive um, 825s. Yeah. And the negative 147s aren't on. It would help maybe if you could draw a picture of the wires that you're pointing to on that so that we can understand... There are two wires, that one. There are a total, are there, aren't there a total of just two different wires? And the windings. That's right. So there's a red wire, so to speak, and a blue wire, right? I'll show you on a toroid. I think it should be easier for you. The reason I went so far ahead and told you now is because I wanted you just to get a feel how it related to the symbol, that there's somehow eventually it's all connected to this, because I don't think that even when you see the other one that you're going to be able to understand exactly how they tie in together. So I... Go ahead. So you're saying uh, the polarity switches when the current reverses its direction. Is that what you're saying? The emanations are always going out. But when they hit one wire, out. the electricity goes in one way. When they hit the other wire, it goes in the opposite direction. Right. But, but you have an alternating current source there, don't you? Right. Well, what makes it switch? It's not switching. That's Let's what, wait till we see the torque. That's what you wanted to ask us early on. You said, we're the switch. We have to figure out how to... or something, didn't you, at the beginning? See, this is what happens when I try and explain something without a chart or a graph. So I'm, I'm not familiar with the, uh, the way the, uh, the activation you sequence. Through, you run um, uh, electric field, uh, electricity through the wires. You've got two wires. And that's the most important right? part. You've got two wires, right? Just like in a plug, you've got two wires. Right? I, this is what I'm understanding. Yeah, you've got the current that, flows in and... That's not two wires. That's a single circuit. That's you close circuit. the circuit. Yeah, but it's, it's, in my case, I have two totally separate circuits. So if I was comparing this to a plug, I would have four wires using your analogy. Oh. Okay. Um, they do not oh. ever... Oh. Yeah. So the that's typical toroid would have one wire. Is that what you're saying? Is that Typical. Right? Yeah. Oh. And you've used two. Which is a bifurcation. And you're winding them like this. With a space in between them. Right. Because it's really three parts. Right. But that's created through the two, isn't it? Or that yeah. exists. It's hard to say we, right. what, what came first, the field or the... Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So by creating the energy with the two, you get the third. Oh, there. It's all, oh, I see it's already there, okay. Yes, I have to kind of make room for it. You, that's better put. Yes, it is okay. displacing. It is, this is making this make room for it. And that brings us back to this, and that's why I'm glad on this. Because this whole thing, all these numbers have an angle and a ratio because they're making room for this field. And it really brought me right to where I wanted to go. Because 1 plus 2 equals 3. It has an angle. I take any two numbers, add them together, and they're going to equal this flux field. 2 plus 4 equals 6. 4 plus 8 is 12, but 1 plus 2 is 3. 8 plus 7 is 15, but 1 plus 5 is 6. See how I'm always going 3, 6, 3, 6? 7 plus 5 is 12, which is 3, and 5 plus 1 is 6. It's always 3, 6, 3, 6. That's because it's being... This spread apart. It's making room. The one two four eight seven five is making room for the three nine six, but they're two separate systems, which we're going to be studying on. Okay.
Okay. Uh, uh, five billion people didn't discover this. Probably a lot more than that. So it's, it's okay that, that this making room concept seems a little different. Okay. So I think I covered as much as I need to cover on this symbol for the moment and for the multiplication table. Probably can take back to that. See? And the yin and yang. Um, I think what I'd like to do, though, is um, because I am really, really making your brains work to the max, this would normally not even be explained, but I just want you to understand something. I took a circle here and I put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, that's called a control. Okay, because as, as I could have done 2, 4, 6, 8, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Okay, and that's a new control. Do you follow what I'm saying? So it's very important that I demonstrate to you that whatever your control is, you're still going to get the same scientific end results. So sure enough, there's your 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5. It's very important that these doubling circuits never go away. They have to exist in anything you know. Fibonacci sequence, Pascal's triangle, uh, um, pi, um, the golden means, gold, everything we know in science. This has to be here. Biology, genetics, uh, periodic table. It has to be there, along with this 396. So the next control is 4 and 5. You know, there's only three multiplication, I mean, there's only six multiplication series as far as uh, 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5 go, as far as the third dimension. So I show those here. Spatial orientation, triangles connected only at the vertex. Okay. Oh, we're going to go to the vortex. We haven't done that yet. Okay. So, but sure enough, 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5, 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5, 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5. We have it? Still there? Okay, it's very important to note that the 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5 is going like this. See how it's always moving in the same way, this treadmill? Because there's, it, everything's based on thirds. And let me tell you, this is why we can't travel backwards in time, and this is why if um, things were based on a duality, the universe would stop flowing forward. And this is why we always eat, or we would die, because it's called a positive flow. It's a stemic system. Our, our system's alive, it's a systemic system. And the last thing you want to do is back up because it moves only one way, which is straight on, forward. Go ahead. You said we can't travel backwards in time, so all these rumors I've been hearing everywhere about time machines is uh, not right in your opinion? It's certain, I do not, they're, if they're moving backwards in time, they're not moving in the created universe of this universe. Oh no, I think they could be parallel universes. Um, and I wouldn't even call them universes. Yeah. And I don't know what's going on. But as far as this physical material world... Lots of time machine talk. But I am very, very, very cautious when I hear about people going back in time. I'm more cautious about that than anything else. In fact, most of the time I turn it off when I hear it on the radio. But I'm going ahead in time. Yes, you can go ahead in time. They do it all the time. And when you go ahead, then how do you get back? You don't. You, there's, you can get back, but not to that moment. You can get back to a time that was not going as fast as you. So you can accelerate. It's like the Star Trek. You go forward in time, uh, have more time to work on something because where you went forward, time is moving slower. Then come back in time where the time was um, moving. I said it vice versa. Did I say it right? Yeah, you go forwards in time where time is... I think I better not try that one. <laughs> um, in reality... When the astronauts, let's use something concrete, when the astronauts went forward in time and when it went into the space, they came back three seconds younger or whatever, or a point something younger. Because in space, you're farther away and mass is a part of time and it, uh, mass affects other mass the em because of the positive emanations that's come from the center of all mass, which are these emanations which we're modeling. So on Earth, time is going faster than it is going out on in outer space away from Earth. So the astronauts then, when they return, they're younger, and conceivably, they can then, we can actually perish, like in Planet of the Apes, before they ever return. And uh, when they return, 
there can be totally different people here and they're still alive. You can actually, and thus they could also go to another solar system to a bigger planet like Jupiter where time is actually faster towards its su surface. Okay, so they can actually go there. Time will, um, and they can actually um, come back much older when they return here. Time is a, a relevant um, ingredient to condensed matter physics. Condensed matter physics is based on your axis, your center of mass, the number nine. The farther, it all has to do with the closer you are to the center of the mass, uh, the faster of time, the faster time goes. The farther away from the center of mass, the slower time goes. The only thing is, there's one more ingredient to that. Time is really moving the same everywhere, because the thing that's controlling it is that frame of reference from your distance. So while time is, it's the fact that they're changing the frame of references, okay, that means that they're moving from one time to another. But in reality, the people in both locations, Earth and Jupiter, they still have a year. They still have the same amount of time to, when, to themselves. It's just that their rules and measures change because they're going to new frames of reference. Okay, now, for instance, I'll give you one example. Time for us right now is different than it was an hour, let's say, when we started two hours ago. How is time different? Okay, so we're expanding inside the universe. Time is really going slower than when we started two hours ago. An hour right now is really um, five hours now compared to two hours ago would have been one hour. Because an hour ago, our, there was less space between our atoms. Two hours ago, there was less, our molecules were more densely packed and, there, and we were more condensed. But because we're still expanding, all our atoms evenly, uniformly like a surface film covering over the water, expanded as we moved away uniformly. So we don't see that time is changing for us because the way that we're it's relating to everything around us. It, everything's uniformly changing the speed of time at the same time. But in reality, as we're receding away, we're going through time frames where time moves differently. This all has to do with quantum mechanics based on the decimal system because these numbers all become quantized very quickly. Okay. So, and the reason they become quantized is because the hole in the center is off center. And so it has to be spin array and it has to explain the vortex and how things work to come, go back in the center. Okay, we won't struggle too hard on time, except that I was just going to show then that you can't remember in the other chart that everything was always moving this way. This way. And on this chart, going backwards, we can never, ever make a multiplication series. It won't work. In other words, the field, the flux field, keeps the electrical only able to move one way, not backwards, as far as time goes. And that also applies to how anything moves through the universe or matter or living biological systems. So how does that work with energy through your body, like, you know, like uh, Chinese, I guess Chinese medicine and that, I guess it's supposed to go like left to right, the chi is not the way it goes this way? Up the left side, around, and down the right side? Your back, and down the front. There's a proper orientation of the energy that uh, David Little was saying. Uh, we in the modern uh, modern times have reversed, and, the, and, yeah. and, and we've got it going in reverse order. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not. The answer is just what Charlie said, and it deserves a lot of discussion. It's orientation, yeah. and we haven't gotten to that yet, and that's the but whole subject. It seems like what you're saying is that time moves one way. And you're talking, I mean, we were just talking, uh, Al, uh, Alistair and I were talking about uh, the fact that uh, uh, physicists are, what you were just saying, that physicists are messing with the idea and the, the phenomenon that you can reverse uh, an, uh, entropic en entropy, which, which really is sort of the same thing as time zero moving forward. You can't undo spontaneously what is sort of decay, things decay spontaneously in time. And uh, he was he was talking something like uh, moving backwards in time, something like that. Yeah, I don't agree with him. 